Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video, we're going to create a small animation using a world space path to form modifier. We'll create a simple logo text and animate it as it deforms and travels along a path. So let's get started. First of all, we'll go to Customize. We'll scroll down under Unit Setup and we're going to select the generic units for this video, then press OK. We'll start by creating a logo in the front viewport. So let's go over to our Create panel. We'll go to Shapes and we're going to select the text. Let's just scroll down here a minute and have a look. Here in the text, by default, Max has a simple text. It's called Max Text. Let's just click in our front viewport to see what it looks like. Let's go back over to the panel. We can just erase this now and type in our own text. I'm just going to type in your logo. But if you want, you can use your own name. Let's pop back up here now to size. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to bring it right down to about 30. That should be all right for this video. Just going to zoom in here a wee bit more. That looks good. Let's have a wee look here at our fonts. By default, it's set to Arial, but you can choose whichever one you want. I think I'll use the Arial, so I'll just go back now and select it. Let's add a bit of depth to this now. To do that, we'll add a bevel modifier. So we'll go to the Modify list. We'll scroll down under Object Space Modifiers and select the Bevel Modifier. Press anywhere in the Perspective Viewport now to activate it, then Alt W to maximize it. Let's just zoom in and have a little look at our logo. We're going to start by creating a bevel on the reverse side of our logo. Here in Parameters, we'll scroll down to Bevel Levels. Level 1. This will be our reversed side. This will be the first level that we're going to create. Let's come over here to level 1 height. We'll type in 0 0.5. Okay, now here in outline, we'll type in 0 0.5 again. That's given that a nice smooth bevel. Look at that. Let's give our text a bit of width. We'll come over now and we'll activate level 2. And in height, we'll type in 5. There we are. We've got a nice width to it, and we've got a small bevel on the reverse side. Let's carry on now and finish off with the last bevel. Let's come back over to the panel and activate level 3. The height has to be the same as the first level, so we'll just type in height 0 0.5. But this time, the outline will be a negative. So we'll type in outline negative 0 0.5. There we are, we've finished the bevel. And that's our 3D logo. Before we can add the path to form modifier to our logo, we need to create a path. But before that, I'm going to change the color. So I'll just come up to the top here. Click on the small color slot, and now here from the object color, I'll select the blue and then press OK. We'll create our path in the top viewport. Press Alt W and go to all four viewports. Then click anywhere in the top viewport, and then press Alt W again to maximize it. I'm just going to zoom out. I want to create my path here. In fact, I'll zoom out a little bit more so I have some more room to create the path. Let's go back over to the panel now, and we'll go to Shapes. You can use any spline, but I'm going to use a line. We're just going to create a simple shape. Select the line, click once, and just move the mouse along. Click again. I'm not dragging the mouse, I'm just moving it. Yeah, something like the letter 2. I'm 
going to go up now to the Modify panel and I'm going to select my Vertex Mode. Next, select one of these vertices here. Just right click. It's set to Corner. I'm just going to select Smooth. I'll do the same again underneath. Let's smooth these corners off for us. I'll do the same here. Now let's go to our last vertex. We'll right click and we'll select our Move Tool. We'll just bring this down, straighten it out a little bit. When we add the Path to Form modifier to the logo, we will select the line as the path. The logo will then be transformed and positioned on the first vertex, which is the yellow vertex. If you'd like to reorient the path and make the last vertex your starting point, then select the last vertex, come over to the panel and click on the Make First icon. But I'll leave it as it was and keep my starting point as it was before. Let's pop back over to the stack now and turn off our line subdivision mode. I'm just going to press Alt W now on the keyboard and go back to all four viewports. I'll click anywhere in the perspective viewport and then press Alt W again to maximize it. Just to zoom out. I'm going to select the logo and now I'd like to zoom out a little bit more so I can see the path at the background. I don't know if you can see it in the video because it's a green color. Yeah, I'll just select it. That'll be easier. We select the logo now and we'll go over to the modify list. And we're going to scroll down under world space modifiers. Let's scroll down now and we'll select path to form world space modifier. This modifier will deform the object based on the shape of the curved path. Let's just scroll down and have a look in parameters. First of all, we'll press pick path. And we'll come over to the screen and we're going to select our line. The object's been flipped in world space and offset from the path. Let's come over to the controllers here. We'll click on Move to Path. There we are. Notice now how it's been placed on our first vertex. Let's change the direction of our logo. Let's come back over to the panel. Here in Path to Form Access, we'll select the X axis. Anyway, now our logo is pointing in the right direction. Now we have it pointing in the right direction, we can move it from one direction to the other. But I'm just going to lay it flat. Just zoom out. I'm just going to orbit around. I want to position like this, so it's laying flat. Now come back over here to the panel, and in rotation, I'm going to type in 90. This is going to rotate my logo and make it stand upright. If you need to flip your logo because it's back to front, you can do too. Just come back over to the panel, path to form axis, and there's that flip button. We can just turn that on. But I'm just going to leave it as it was, so I'll go back and turn it off. Everything's ready now, so we can start to move the object. Just come back over the panel. And here in percentage, I'm just going to drag the dial up. Just hold the spinner and I'll bring it up. There we are, now it's starting to move from one direction to the other. I'm just going to orbit around so we can have a look here at this curve. Notice how our object is deforming as it travels along the path. Let's carry on moving the spinner now and we'll just stop it when we get to the end of the path. I'm just going to zoom in. This is going to be the position of the end of my animation. I'll just come over here to the percentage button and bring it back to zero. And that will send my object right back to the beginning again. Before we start to animate it, why don't we have a look at one more effect. Twist. Let's just come down here and have a look at the twist. Let's type in 360. Now when we turn our percentage button, the logo is going to twist around 360 degrees. And now when it stops right in front of us, it will be upright again. You can rotate and twist your logo as much as you like, but I'm just going to leave these settings for this video. 
Let's pop back up now and turn our percentage button back to zero. Our first keyframe will be set at zero, and our last one will be set at 100. Let's press Auto key. The logo will start here right at the top. It will travel along the path and deform and twist as it gets to the end. Let's just bring our slide right to the 100, right to the other end, and now up in percentage, I'm going to just drag it up and stop it right here. Right there. This is where my animation is going to finish. I'll come down now and turn up my outer key. Bring my slide back. See how it's twisting and turning? Let's just push our play button. Yeah, we've just created a small animation. Might be a bit fast. Why don't we click here on time configuration? Now here in the panel, I'm going to click on the rescale time button. And in here in end time, let's just have a look, make sure it's end time. I'm going to type in 200. And then press OK. Notice that our end time has automatically been changed. Let's press our OK button and close the dialog. Let's have a wee look at the timeline. You can see now it's been perfectly reset to 200 frames. I'll push the play button now. Now our logo travels a lot slower. You can make your animation go faster or slower by just adjusting the time here in our time configuration. You can reset it to 150 or just leave it as 200 if you like. Just one more thing I think we can do. I'm going to come back to my time configuration button and turn off loop. This way now when I play it, it will stop at the end of the track. Just do this once more, press the play button. And now here's our animation. The logo is deforming, twisting and stopping here right in front of us. You can render this out if you like. Hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.